Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to uh, Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. This is Module 7, Computer Vision, Part 3, TensorFlow and Convolutional Neural Networks. Okay, this is the data from the module. When you execute this and, um, um, and run it, this basically loads the minced data set into your into Python's memory. So it tells you the shape of it. You'll see that the shape of the X train is 602828. So we have 60,000 training set elements and each of them is 28 by 28. They are grayscale. So we're dealing just with a single channel. You don't have the three depths of the the three deep of the RGB like we have here. The test data set is 10,000. So you see that here. This loads it in. The minced load data, this is a magic function built into Keras that makes it very easily easy to get a hold of the minced data set. Looking at these is important. I always like to look at the data and see what a shape is, see what its form is. And I basically am taking a single digit, reshaping it to 28 by 28 and then displaying it as a data frame. So you can definitely, the dot dot in the middle is where it is chopping out data because it's just too big to display all these numbers on the screen. But you can see definitely some strokes and lines of, of the individual letter or number that we're displaying here. Um, and I believe this is a five, so you can probably see, see some of that there. If you want to display it as an image and see the whole thing, this code is very useful for doing this. So you can pick any image that you want to in there and simply run it and it will show you another image. The last time that I ran this, it's a seven. I'm not actually running these because the they do take a while. This part wouldn't, this would run pretty quick, but actually compiling the Fitting the, the uh, convolution net does does take time. Um, on just the CPU instance, I've seen 40 minutes. Uh, on my laptop's GPU, about 20 minutes. And we'll see examples of how fast this will train with an Amazon GPU when we get to the HPC class. So the first thing that we're going to do is um, train the or define the CNN. So we need to define a convolutional neural network just so that we can train it. So we look at the data first and we need to see how the data are encoded. It might be channels first or it might be um, um, rows and columns first. It's, it's all a question of how how that dimension is is shrunk down because we need to take it and get those into a 28 by 28 uh, tensor. And this lets us know the image format that Curas wants and what Curas wants there is is very much tuned by the hardware. So we get the training data, we get all of that. Uh, we have the data ready at that point, so we know the dimensions of the data. But now we build the neural network, and that's the part here. This is really very similar to the neural network building that we did previously. Here we are just creating various layer types, and you can see that we basically have the Conv2Ds, uh, max pooling, and we're even adding in some dropout layers. Now dropout layers, we'll get more into that um, in a future module when we talk about regularization. But the example I'm drawing this from gets better results with dropout, and dropout is very frequently used with computer vision. So we create a convolution, we create a convolution 2D the kernel size is going to be 3 by 3, so that little filter that drags across is going to be 3 by 3. And then the input shape, since this is the input layer, we need to have input shape is what we define it as. And then there's 32, um, the, the input shape, by the way, would be 28 by 28 matching, matching that. 
we would have 32 filters in our convolution layer. And then we have another convolution layer right off the bat that is three by three again, but it does not have the input shape because it's not the input layer. Then we have a max pooling layer where we're basically losing, we're taking everything that was to, to two by twos, or by two by two, so two by two across, and then that essentially, if so if it was 10 across, taking twos across it, that would cut that in half to five. So you shrink, shrink it down, max pooling, uh, down to um, 25. This flatten is a very important layer. You didn't see that in, uh, actually you did see it in the, in the JavaScript. There's a final sort of layer. This is when you're done with the 3D tensors and you're ready to go back to old school neural networks with a dense 128 hidden layer neuron there. Um, this flattens out the layers so, so that they can go through the dense, uh, fully connected, just uh, vectorized uh, layers. If you didn't have that, you'd try to pass tensors through to it and that would, that would bond. And then we use softmax because we are dealing with a, um, with a classification neural network. We are measuring it with accuracy. Uh, we could have used cross entropy as, as well, or we are using categorical cross entropy. We're adding an additional metric for accuracy. And we now have the neural network set up and we're able to, to train it. Now this is just using a Microsoft Surface Book computer, but this shows you how really cool GPUs are. The CPU training this was an hour and 50 minutes. The GPU, just common laptop mobile GPU, 13 minutes. And I haven't tried the Mint's data set yet, but we'll look at that one as well when we deal with high-end GPUs from Amazon's uh, cloud instances and see really how fast we can, we can slam through this particular one and some of the other, uh, other ones. But down to, down to 13 minutes is, is, is quite good. Unfortunately, they only support CUDA architecture right now. And doubly, unfortunately, Macs are more AMD right now. So that's one of the main reasons I have not upgraded my PowerBook uh, in, a, in a while is it has a nice NVIDIA processor on it. And the whole thing of proprietary CUDA versus open, open um, CL is an ongoing debate, but the problem I have is TensorFlow presently only works in CUDA, so CUDA is primarily what I what I focus upon at this point. And then this is the code that actually trains it. It's the same code whether you do GPU or CPU, it does not matter. And it goes through the whole thing and eventually finishes and it prints how long it took. That's really all we're using the helping the handy functions at the top that, that we use in every class is we're using it to print this elapsed time. You'll notice the accuracy is very good. Now this is an important thing to consider with GPUs. GPUs don't have as much memory typically as the main computer. And this is fine. This is another reason that the mini batches are good because the mini batches are just taking small sections and throwing it at the GPU. If you're trying to evaluate accuracy, then you're giving it the whole big 10,000 row validation set. And the problem there is that requests that you put the entire validation set into memory to do that. If it's CPU memory, that's not that big of a deal. But for GPU memory, this can easily exhaust your resources and you'll get a resource exhaust error. So GPU is really, really good for training, but for just querying it, your CPU will probably, unless you have a massive amount of memory on the GPU, but even then you'll exhaust it and you'll have to segment it. And this is just doing a subsample. So if you are trying to do this on a GPU, I subsample it and just calculate the accuracy on the first uh, 100 images. So just things to keep in mind if you are doing GPU. 
just some of the latest advances in um, in CNNs. There is something called a ResNet, which is very, very interesting and very computationally expensive. It takes a lot of compute power. Um, but if you look at this, it is a deep residual network. So yeah, this is literally what it looks like. How's that for a lot of layers? And each layer sort of skips. Um, that's the residual part of it. But this, and they've taken it a lot further than 34. I've seen ResNets over 100 layers. So this is very much what they're working on. They're working with the ImageNet classification network that I showed you uh, in a previous part of computer vision. And this basically is where part of where you're going with, um, with convolution nets. There's also research that's very interesting on getting this trained for ImageNet, and then maybe you have your own set of images you want to learn to do, but they're much smaller. So you could actually use the weights as a starting point from something trained on ImageNet and customize it to, to your own images that you're adding on top of it. And there's a whole very active area of research around that as well. So just using some of these big trained neural networks as, as starting points. But it takes a lot of compute power to really process a, uh, a ResNet. Okay, this is the end of the computer vision module.